reason. Good morning. Ordinarily, um, Trish would be doing this announcement. And if you've ever been here when Trish has done any sort of an announcement, she always has props. Hmm. So, what is all this about? Well, what I'm doing is I'm inviting you to go on a journey with us next Sunday. So, what is it? It's a conversation with Mark about where we have been as a congregation and where we're hoping to go. We acknowledge that we are located on the traditional indigenous territory of the Coast Salish peoples, and that we are guests in this land. Come, let us worship God. O oh God of love, we pray for the people of Ukraine, the frail and the elderly, the women and the children who are left alone, grieving families with loved ones who have fallen, and the multitudes who have lost everything. O oh God of peace, how we long that violence will cease, that the machines of war will be transformed into implements of peace. Be with the leaders of this world that the decisions will be keenly oriented towards a just and lasting peace. O God of compassion, open our hearts to care for the refugees who might come to our shores and the needy stranger in our midst. For Christ's sake. Amen. where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. 
Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Listen for God's good news. Thanks be to God. Easter is already a celebration of hope, from death to life, from despair to joy. But it is difficult this year, when the drums of war notch the bell of hope ring loud. For many Ukrainians, Easter hasn't come, or not quick enough. We do our part not to forget them. Peace may look a long way from here, but as Easter people, we cannot give up. Father Long Salsa of World Council of Churches said, God is on the side of the sufferer. We usually do not think that God takes sides. We usually value neutrality. But sometimes neutrality only enhances the brutality of the wicked. Taking sides matters. The question is which side to take. I have told you before, and I hope you remember, no matter what church here it is, Thomas always occupies the second Sunday of Easter. And Jesus revealed himself to disciples and later to the infamous doubting Thomas. John 20 begins on that night the doors of the place where the disciples were shut for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood in the midst of them and said to them, Peace be with you. I have showed you before, and I don't mind to show you and point that out to you again. What was so fearful about Jews? Who was Jew? Was Jesus not a Jew? His disciples weren't Jews. Most people who read this text soon after, when it, after it is composed, weren't Jews. The church developed then a bias against Jews and the culture. For 2,000 years, the church developed a lens to interpret anything Jewish through this biased lens. When John wrote this passage, the people of that day understood who Jews, who those Jews were, but it was not clear to us. Many Christians have taken this text literally and believe Jews were the enemies of Jesus, all the Jews. And when John wrote this story, he most likely has certain Jewish leaders in mind they were no Jewish Jews who had the empire's backing to arrest Jesus' disciples. But most of us who read this account were not Jews. Not knowing the context, the Christian church throughout the ages have built a culture of discrimination against Jews. There's always the temptation because the text for us who read this text no longer Jewish, and none of us sitting here is Jewish. And we read something like that, it makes it super easy to say, oh yeah, those Jews. But not all Jews. Jesus himself was a Jew. The disciples, all the disciples who locked themselves in that room were Jewish. You have to have this in mind. You have to understand this. But it's always tempting. And in our times when cultural maybe disagree with one another and there's all kinds of conflict, those who bombed the pure harbors were not all Japanese. Those who did terrible things about for the Jewish people during the Second World War, they were the Nazi Germany, the government. Not all Germans were terrible people. And I know it is hard, it is hard to distinguish, it is hard to separate. When we have certain things coming up, we blame just everybody. 
may that be Chinese, Japanese, Germans, and now Russians. In a way, I feel sorry. And I hope this war will end really, really soon. We welcome the Russian tennis players on whatever. We must remember that most of these writers were Jews themselves, that in the strong political climate behind the Bible, the gospel has always been not only just personal, but social. So John ends chapter 20 with a reference to Thomas' doubt. Thomas did not believe that Jesus had risen from the dead, and Thomas was overconfident and doubts the resurrection of Jesus. So he said, I will not believe until I see the nail marks in his hand, until I put my finger into them, and until I put my hand into his ribs. Every year we read this text, every time I hear something like that, I felt Thomas, it is overboard, it is too much. We generally have the impression that Thomas was a man of little faith and not a role model for believers. In many ways, that's true, no. But in other ways, it's just one of them. I'm Thomas, I might say to you. It's the nature of things and it is easy. But when Jesus appeared before him, Jesus did not rebuke him. Instead, Jesus said, stretch out your finger and touch my hand. Stretch out your hand and reach my will. If you need to touch in order to believe, come, please, touch me. Although Jesus said that those who do not see are blessed, the parts that was missed in the reading, Jesus did not despise a sincere heart that seeks to know the truth. Jesus did not rebuke Thomas. Some people, just like him, just need a little more room to think, a hiatus, you might say, before they accept new ideas. Let me tell you that doubt is not always negative. Some people doubt for the sake of doubting. They don't believe and will never commit. They will not take the religious life or the teachings seriously. But some people doubt because they believe in God. They doubt because they want to seek a deeper meaning of life. They question the doctrines that has been taught for thousands of years, not because they don't believe in God. It is the contrary. They want to know God deeper. So doubt can be an expression of love for God, for truth, for love. There are many types of doubt. There is one kind that causes you to become discouraged and to give up hope. But there is another type of doubt that causes you to love the mystery of life. So as we gather today, the shadow of war reappears. It's not just a shadow of war, as it's correct. It is the war reappears in our beautiful war world. And the politics of power and domination never seems to have to leave our society for a moment, it looks like, it feels like. The events of the world resemble a chess game with bad and provocative moves casting disbelief, panic, and fear. When terrible events repeatedly occur in our societies and countries, we join Thomas in disbelieving such things can happen again in front of our eyes. But doubt doesn't have to lead us into despair. God is gracious and change is possible. No, we don't have real political power to change reality. But we never lose sight of the fact that violence never wins. Never. 
The resurrected Jesus still has the same words to say to us. Peace be with you. This is a different kind of peace, not the kind of peace that comes when things are calm. It is the peace when Jesus embraces us in the midst of chaos and fear, like those disciples locking themselves up in the room, afraid to face the world. Jesus comes and he invites us to come and follow him. Peace be with you. And when Jesus says those words, the Caesar was still the emperor. Herod was still the governor. And the Roman soldiers were still patrolling the streets, looking for Jesus' followers. Thomas was able to move from doubt to confession of Jesus as Lord, not because the army has left or the empire has collapsed, but Jesus has shown himself to him. Thomas witnessed the power of resurrection and saw the wounded signs of suffering. The wounds caused by the nails were real. Thomas saw it in his own eyes, touched it if he dared. Despite the reality of suffering, there is something bigger, mightier, and powerful sitting in our hearts and minds, which is the peace Jesus gives us. That is something lovely, beautiful, true, still staying in our hearts that tells us life is still beautiful. Light shines in the darkness, and darkness cannot overcome it. I still believe it. The assurance of peace may not be enough to topple empires, but it is strong enough to stop us from living pessimist, pessimistic lives. lives. Quite the contrary, the peace that Jesus gives, no one can give, and no one can take away. It is that peace that continues to stay with us as long as we live. By the grace of God, give us courage to believe against all odds. Stay true to our calling as peacemakers. Live life, live love, live Christ. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always.